This week we will study packed learning. So before dive into packed learning, let's uh, first define a formal model, the statistical learning framework. Basically, what is learning? We in the machine learning framework, in the statistical machine learning framework, there is a learner. Usually, machine is the learner. And the learner learns something from data. So here the learner's input is there is some input domain set x. Usually domain points x are represented by a vector of features. And domain points are also referred to as instances. So there are many instances. And we will learn something from the instances, from the data. And the, each data point and each instances can be scalar, like a 10, 5, something. Or it could be some vector, like this. Or it could be some matrix, or image. Image also some matrix or tensor, multidimensional matrix. Okay, uh, there are multiple different form of uh, input domain type. And in supervised learning setting, there is some label set as well. So each instance have a true upper label Y. So basically the both a domain set and label set define the learner's input, and from the learner's input, we will learn something. So let's denote by S the total set of input domain and uh, label. So each instance has corresponding upper label yi. And when we have n different instances and n different training data point or data point, we have um, uh, x1, y1 pair, x2, y2 pair, up to xn, yn pair. Okay. Then the learner from the training data makes some prediction rule. Let's denote by h. So h is a function mapping from the domain set to label set, uh, which is also known as predictor or a hypothesis or a classifier if the task is classification task okay basically from you know for instance in scala input domain and some continuous scala output label set and with this training data so this is y this is x from this data point we have to make a prediction rule h, for instance, like this function or this linear function using the training data. That is a statistical learning framework input and up. We could from training data making a prediction rule that is machine learning. Uh, to uh, understand uh, the performance of training, we have to define some data generation model because the quality of learning very depend on the data quality. So what kind of data generation model we can think? Uh, in many cases and almost every uh, cases in our class, we will assume that there exists some data generation distribution D, which is pro probability distribution over our input domain X. But the learner does not know the distribution before learning. We can, or the learner can estimate uh, the distribution D from the observation, but we assume that the learner does not know the exact distribution D. 
right? And from D, uh, we basically uh, randomly generate input X, we will assume. And the alpha wave Y will be decided by a correct labeling function, a co correct hypothesis F, which means at every instance Xi, we have to decide the output label as well because um, we have to make a training data point consists of input and output label. Uh, so in um, during this course, we will consider this kind of data generation model many times. There exists probability distribution over input domain and there exists ground truth function f and the output yi, output label yi will be decided by the function and input instance. Of course the function f is unknown to the learner because if f is known to the learner we don't need to learn anything because we already know the ground truth rule. And most of the case, the goal of learning is to find f, the correct labeling function f, from the training data. Uh, we have to measure the quality of learning using measure of success. If the problem is classification task, we usually use this uh, the error of prediction error. So we usually define the probability over data generation process. For the event, our estimated hypothesis, our learned hypothesis H does not match it with uh, is not match it with the ground truth F function. So this a uh, probability description explain kind of test set. From the training, we find uh, H hypothesis. Of course, the H is the best hypothesis that explain the input and output pair in your training data. But when you uh, sample new data point from the data distribution because uh, the new data point was not in your training data which does not um, take into account we do not take into account the, the testing data point for the training data for the training process in some maybe it is correctly classified, but maybe it is not correctly classified. So the probability of this uh, new data point with respect to this new data point uh, describes kind of expected test error after your training process. And we are really interested in the quality of our learning process for the new data point instead of our uh, training data point, right? So this is most of the case the quality of learning process, okay? Um, but, you know, we cannot compute this exact error of prediction error because we don't know the distribution d. So we have to estimate the loss using empirical risk. The empirical risk is from the sample basically empirically est estimate the error rate. Right? Uh, for instance, when we have n training data or n data point, just counting the number of data point where the true and the extracted hypothesis are not the same and divided by the total number of data point n. Okay. 
By the way, this notation is very common notation to denote the integer set from 1 to the number. Okay. Right. So this is also called training error because uh, this er empirical risk error just comes from the training data point. So this is kind of the true test error. This is training error. So generalization error can be described with LDFH, the expected test error, minus the sample empirical risk error. Okay. When this value is large, we say our algorithm is overfitted because training error is really small but the test error really high which means your algorithm just can explain only the training data point and you cannot explain the other point based on this um, training process which is overfitting the famous of right? Right. And in many training process, we usually try to minimize the empirical risk, the training error. Okay, so among hypothesis class H. So why we need hypothesis class? Well, let's go back to this uh, simple 1D input, one dimensional input, and one dimensional output scenario. If you don't have any restriction on the function, there are tons of different functions that can fit all the training data points perfectly. Okay, there are uncountably many different functions that has zero training error. In that case, it is almost impossible to define a learning process using entire function defined on a real line. So most of the case we restrict the class of function and we find the best function among the restricted function class in your training process. This is called hypothesis class where your function model. Okay. So each function mod each function belong to the hypothesis class uh, is a function from input domain to output domain and among functions in your hypothesis class we usually find the best function that minimize the empirical risk the training error. Okay? We usually find the empirical risk minimizer for the training sample that minimizes the empirical risk. Okay. 